had two people accidentally shot on a movie set. The filing says officers later found seven live rounds in the ammo box. Um, have you yourself, and not just on this set, but have you ever um, encountered a defective blank or a defective dummy? Yeah. So, you know, I've had a couple of blanks that haven't gone off, you know, but usually that's because the actor doesn't pull the hammer all the way back. And so it'll just be at half cock. And so when they shoot it, it won't ignite it. And I usually just say, like, oh, it was a misfire to kind of save the actor's face a little bit in that case. Mm -hmm. um, and then for in terms of bad dummies, I had never experienced a bad dummy. Okay. Um, so what's your standard protocol, like, if one of them is defective? Either or one of the blanks. Either one. Okay, so if the blanks are defective, you know, um, usually I'll just take them, I'll put them in my pocket, I'll save them for later, and then if I'm curious enough, I'll just go ahead and, like, shoot them and be like, okay, yeah, they didn't pull the hammer all the way back. Or if the, if the dummies were defective, I guess, I would put them in my pocket and just save them to later and check them out. Okay. Um, have you ever in your history of working encountered live rounds on the set? Never. Okay. And how do you know that? Uh, because every dummy I've ever shaken has been a dummy, and the other ones have holes on the side, and I've never experienced a round that looked like a dummy and behaved like a blank or anything. So, yeah, I am shaking all of them most of the time. Okay. So... And then, I know you've said this a million times, so just do me a favor, go over uh, each round and then how the round works. Each round of blanks? Yeah. And dummies. So, I know okay. that there's, like, obviously a couple different kinds of dummies. All right, yeah. Okay. You don't have to go into, like, no, every okay. specific caliber or anything of this sort, but just... Okay. Let's, uh, all right. So, a lot of the dummies, the ones with primer caps, those ones mostly go in the belts and everything. Uh, a lot of the primer caps are punctured most of the time, you know, because they get hit while they're in the gun. So those will go in the gun sometimes uh, if I don't have the other ones. There are some with holes in the side uh, that also still have the primer caps and everything. And then there's the ones with no primer caps, and there's no and there's a hole in the side sometimes too with those, and sometimes there's not. Um, and mostly I like to put the ones with no primer caps into the guns, you know, just to make everyone feel safe. Um, and then for the other ones, those go in the belts, you know, and uh, the ones that have the primer cap and the hole in the side are good for both, really. Okay. And then, and then for the all the loads, yeah, all right. So for all the blanks, all the quarters, um, so there's eighth loads. Those are the super quietest ones. And I just worked with Ryan Armstrong, that little 11-year-old on the old way, and I had her use those. So especially if it's someone that's really young and new with the guns, I'll make sure that there's the smallest load possible, which is an eighth. Um, some horses require eighth loads. Um, most of the time I'll put horsey, I'll put the box and I'll put horsey rounds on them in my own handwriting so that way I know. Um, and are those the eights? Yeah, those are the eights. And then sometimes, you know, um, I will, if it's super close proximity and inside eights too, but quarters also work for inside proximities that are close. Um, and then on top of that, uh, for the quarters, around kids, around horses too, that's like the last size pretty much allowed. And then... We do the half loads if it's going into like a rifle or if we're outside. Like we did a lot of half loads on the show because a lot of it was outside. And then for the full loads, it's very rare still that I use a full load unless like an actor is just really weird and wants it. Uh, Alec only wanted to train with full loads because he wanted it to look realistic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, most of the time I'll use 
full loads if it's a really big gun, like a trap door or something, a trap door rifle. You that would have a lot of smoke coming out of it, so you want to make sure it looks realistic. Okay. Um, were all of these used for rust? Fulls were used for rust. Some of my eighths were used for rust. Quarters were used for rust, and halves were used for rust. Yeah. Okay. So it was really a variety, and just depending on the situation. Okay. And then, is anyone allowed to bring their personal firearms on the set? Uh, no. Did you see anybody bring personal firearms? No. And did you ever see anyone bring ammo? No. Okay. Did anybody ask you about going target shooting? Uh, yeah. The, the, the Wranglers made a joke about it one time to me, and I said something to the effect of, well, you can try. You don't have the ammo. Okay. What did they say? Do you remember? Uh, not really. I don't really remember what they said. But they insinuated about shooting actual rounds. Yeah. Okay. I think that they were joking, though. Okay. A lot of boys on set will be like, oh, my God, can we go shoot the guns? So, yeah. But no one pressured you into it? No, no one ever seriously pressured me into it. Uh, what about Sarah? What about Sarah? Did, they, did she ever mention anything about shooting? No. Sarah, yeah, no. She never mentioned anything about shooting, and we left every day at the same time and pretty much got there just around a little after each other. Okay. Um, so as far as safety protocols on set, um, do you recall any sort of safety protocols during the time of the production? Um, we had a couple of safety meetings. A lot of days we did not, which normally it's typical anytime that there's firearms or live animals on set or open flame, you do a safety meeting. So a lot of those days we did not have a safety meeting. Um, other than that, who safety... Who hosted them? Huh? Who hosted those safety meetings? Dave. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember what they were about? Um, guns, like the guns and everything. We also said, you know, because actors will leave guns around sometimes, they'll forget them. So we always told people, you know, like, don't ever touch a gun if you see it, you know, because Jensen totally left his on the snack bar one time. Yeah. Mm hmm. And we, we found that pretty promptly. But. Isn't your uh, snack bar down at base camp? No. Where was it? It's on set. We can't, like, go all the way back to base for okay. snacks. Well, so I was like, oh. No. Uh, Our cafeteria. I think you're thinking of the cafeteria. Yeah, where we have it. Yeah. No. We have crafty on set really close to set most of the time. Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, that would be interesting. You're talking about the snack bar, like, the little, like, trailer that has all the... No. It's just crafty. Oh. Just a table on set with, like, nutritious bars on it. My favorite part of getting to work movie sets is oh yeah, they have, like, a little I love when they like, have the trailer. Yeah, like, those are the legit ones. This one was like stupid cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they like barely let her make soup for us. They barely met, let her make soups for us, and she had to fight hard for the soup. I called Becca the soup angel. She fought hard for those soups. Um, did you ever see safety bulletins? Um. Where would they be posted, I wonder? Um, you know, sometimes they would put some things in the call sheet, you know, like some safety bulletins and everything. Do you remember what they said? Um, I think they would pertain to COVID. They would pertain to, you know, like fi firearms on set. They would pertain to live animals. Uh, yeah, it's usually kind of like in red on the call sheet. Okay. Other than that, they would sometimes in an email, like, put it in red, like, anything you needed to know about the day. Do you still have those emails? I have, I think I might have some of those emails still. Okay. Yeah. Do you want yes, to grab those? those? Yeah, because, sure. Because mm -hmm. um, that's, you know, obviously yeah. Yeah. a big, uh, who distributes, because you guys would get call sheets the night before. Yeah. Right? Tim, Tim Bezerra usually sent them out. Okay. Yeah. 
What is his position? He is also an assistant director, but he's more of the type where he is never on set and his only job is sitting in the office and creating these schedules and doing all the paperwork. So he's normally out. Um, yeah, he's normally never on set, that poor boy. All right. Who would you say is in charge of those safety meetings that were being held? Dave, and then uh, the first time we did it, he let me speak, um, yeah, and I told people, you know, like, these are regular weapons we have on set, don't stand in front of them, don't point them at anybody, and then after that, the only other one we had was the day of, and Dave kind of just covered most of that. Okay, do you remember what he talked about the day? Not entirely. He just told everybody, like, you know, we do have, like, blanks on set. We are going to have a lot of gunfire today. Real guns on set. No one touched them, you know. Okay. Things like that. And also things about the horses, he told. When did you host a safety meeting? I never hosted one all by myself. Okay. What do you said that he let you do one, though? He let, me, he let me hop in on his. Okay. Yeah, he said, Hannah, do you have anything else to add? And I said, yeah. And I said, let's be safe, you know, like no one be standing in the way of these things and just like don't be, if it's pointing in that direction, don't stand in front of it. Okay. Do you remember what day that was? Then? That was the first day we had gunfire on set, which I believe was the second day that uh, we started uh, on set. Tell me. Okay. So, yeah. So, what do you teach um, actors or crew members when it comes to gun safety? So, it really um, also depends on the actors, too. You know, like, big ones like Nick Cage, if they tell me, if or if they tell the director, like, you know, they, that they don't really care to do it, I can try to teach them for the most part, but like a lot of the times they might not even listen to me or really pay attention or be on their phone. Alec was on his phone, a lot of that entire thing. But for the most part, uh, they put me in training this time. It was pretty irregular how I trained actors this time. This time they put nine people all together in one day Okay. that I was supposed to train. And during this time, they put a ton of producers right there. Normally, I train the actors one-on-one. -on -one. It makes them feel comfortable. It allows them to not be distracted and everything. And this time, they had me training three people at once and um, a ton of producers behind me. The director is there, too. The producers are talking to the actors. The actors were distracted, even, too. Um and I tried to do my best to work with all three of them. I worked with Jensen. You could probably see a video of him saying, like, you, she showed me, like, this is how you check it. You know, this is how we should make sure it's safe. So I tried to do that standard same thing every time, show them how to check their own gun and show them how to make sure it's safe. Um, and then I always talk, I have them draw it a few times, you know, with nothing in there, make sure that they have the draw down. Uh, usually a little before that, I'll have them like just fire off a couple of quarter loads, you know, so they can get the idea of not drawing it from their thing, but just holding it and firing it so they can get, so they can understand what they're going to be doing. Okay. And then after that, we work on uh, the actions that they're going to specifically do. So, you know, if I know that they have a scene and everything, we kind of talk it out together and like how they would run, pull it out, what they could do, you know, how not to let it fall on the ground, how not to, like, let rocks get inside of it. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. What about safety rules? Do you advise them any of those? Safety rules such as I tell them all the time uh, not to point them at each other. Uh, that's my biggest one. And I always say to everyone in front of them, I'm like, if you don't have to be here, don't be here. You know, um, other than that, Safety-wise, um, I tell them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard unless they're ready to shoot because that's how a lot of um, accidental discharges will happen. And that's just what my dad's told me at least. So I always try to advise them to keep their finger out of the trigger guard. And, yeah. Okay. Um, besides you, were there any other trained armorers on the set? Mm -hmm. Sarah was kind of trained by Seth. 
Yeah. I believe Sarah did a show before, and I think that there were two guns involved in the show. And Seth had trained her personally for that. Okay. And then I also kind of showed her what to do at the beginning of it to make sure that she wouldn't have an accidental discharge. But she still did, so. Yeah. Um, so before any um, gun scene, even just like rehearsal or filming or anything of the sort, did they do a brief? Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes they would have time to, like, really go into it and everything and, like, kind of, you know, work out the action. Sometimes they would do, like, an overall one, you know, where they kind of just say, like, bang, 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 bang. So we did have some rehearsals. Sometimes, you know, there wasn't always rehearsals. Okay. So sometimes, yeah, we totally had, like, rehearsals usually the big ones, and we just kind of have people go bang, 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 bang. All right. Um, as far as so what it's been referred to as the, the show-and-tell day where you brought out yeah, um, pretty much everything, right? Yeah, we brought out every gun that we had that Seth gave to us, and uh, the director really just wanted a lot of options for people, especially because there are so many big names on this. So he wanted to be sure that all the actors knew that it was possible for them to switch around their guns. And that just because we had thought that they would look good with that gun doesn't mean that they were stuck with it. Okay. Um, can you go into a little bit more detail about how this day played out? Like, where did you guys set up this table? Okay. And Yeah. So the day played out, um, we go to the edge of the town and everything, uh, away from all the people working on the other side. Um, they set up a table, they set up an easy up for us, and um, the prop truck was coming later that day. So that was finally the first day that we got to get the prop truck going. I brought a gun safe and my tiny Hyundai fitted in there, and so I had that with me right next to us, and I kept all the ammunition in my trunk and everything and I kept and Sarah had all of the guns in her trunk and so we took all those guns out of the trunk and we put them on the table we had two tables so we had two tables filled with long rifles short guns a lot of guns mm -hmm. um and then also once the show and tell was over um Joel was pretty cool he was happy with everything um after that was over, he stuck around, and then, like, I think the first couple of actors showed up for training and everything, because I remember they said, like, okay, you're going to have, like, three at this time, and, like, three here, and three there, and I was like, all right, like, that's kind of manageable, and it is kind of manageable, you know, and it definitely, I've worked with two at a time before. Three is manageable, but, like, also, then all of a sudden, with the actors, all these producers came, like a ton of producers. And so the producers are just kind of behind us the whole time. The guns are out there. We put a lot of them away that we didn't need for the training that day. So Sarah put a lot of those away and we just kept those in my car because I had the safe and ultimately I was gonna put them in the safe at the end of the day. Um, and then, so the actors came, we started training and everything. And then all of a sudden a producer, just like jumps into the training because I guess he was also firing, but they didn't schedule him for me. So at one point I was training four people at one time, which is a little chaotic. Um, yeah. So, so when there, you have them, sorry, but when you had them all out on the table, how many people would you say were there like max at a time that were probably like 10 messing 10, and, like, not everyone was really allowed to mess with them. You know, like, a couple producers, like, would ask if they could touch them. Ultimately, I always get pissed at people if they touch them without my permission. Okay. Joel, I let do that. You know, Joel is the director. He can touch them. Um, but, yeah, other than that, most people were there, and most people would be, like, wouldn't even ask to touch them. Yeah, good, like, 10 producers were there. Okay. Yeah. And uh, Gabby and Ro were there at the beginning, and eventually, like, they left with kind of everybody. Okay. And, and then the towards the end of train. So at the beginning of the day, I was supposed to train six, uh, and then I had an hour-long break, you know, um, and 
I think I was there from like nine to like two or eight to now yeah, nine to two just training actors pretty much the entire time um, and doing the show and tell. And then so I trained six of them then and then plus that producer that they threw in there randomly. And then after that, an hour went by and I trained Devin and I trained Miller. And yeah, and the last guy didn't show up. Okay. Who yeah. was the producer that you trained? Nathan. Okay. Do you remember his last name? No, not really. He was on set a lot. He was like a nice, uh, nice younger one, kind of. Okay. How long would you say you spent with each group training? Uh, with each actor, probably like mm, 30, 20 minutes okay. or so. Yeah, usually I like to work with the actors one-on-one -on -one and get like a full 30 minutes to an hour in, you know? But that's just not how it went on this one. Who made that call? Uh, Gabri Gabrielle. Okay. Did she give you a time limit? She just put three people together. Like, she scheduled it like that, and she said they had other things to do and had other, you know, they had to go and do training with the Wranglers. And a lot of this training was, like, the it's day the before. Yeah, they're like, ride a horse now, and now you get to shoot a gun. And, like, yeah. You get to shoot a gun off a horse. Yeah, yeah honestly, <laughs> it's crazy because a lot of the times they have actors start working with the horses, like, months in advance because you can grasp grasp the guns a little quicker than like a weird living animal and all that stuff yeah so yeah they didn't have people training on horses well in advance for this either which i thought was pretty wild another total off subject but i was you know we brought jensen in here and spoke to him and i found out that the gentleman who provided the horses for this set, I used to actually be a wrangler for him. Oh, really? Oh, oh, That's yeah. fun. Yeah. Isn't he so cute? His horses are terrifying. Yeah, no, the horses are scary. I, I honestly, I was trying to get out of Western because every Western I'm on, a horse almost kills me. Yeah. Shit you not. Like, horses back up crazy. And, like, no one even said, like, not to walk behind the horses on this. And I was like, Sarah, Sarah. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, you know, I was just, like, to the complete lack of just, like, yeah. Yeah, I used to wrangle for him. And yeah. He I love Rally. He's, but... he's a sweetheart. But, yeah, the horses are bad. But, honestly, like, it's been a long time since I've been able to work with any really good horses because I have been doing independence. You know, no one can afford, like, the good horses that Magnificent Seven had back when I was there in 15, you know. Well, he used to do all kinds of, like, trail rides and stuff like that, too. But, I mean, he, I can tell you, like, because he goes, when they do trail rides, they go up, you know, that mountain that has a cross on it down at the end of oh, yeah. Bonanza? Yeah. So he used to take the horses up that mountain. Yeah. And I just remember one day he put me on a, on a uh, thoroughbred that came off the track, a mare, and, like, sh she was hot. She was a hot horse. Yeah. yeah. And so he, like, slightly drugged her up before oh, wow. this trail ride. Yeah. And, like, I remember a couple of the horses. <laughs> she was off in her own world. We'll just say that. Oh, yeah. Man. A couple of the horses got loose on this. One, like, made a full-ass run for it, like, wow. three times during one scene. Uh, they did their best they could to catch it, and eventually they started catching it. But, like, it made three good runs, like, right past the bathrooms. And I was like, oh, oh my God, it's going to hurt somebody. <laughs> I love horses, but... I don't I like, like horses because horses. of Westerns. <laughs> Westerns have made me not like horses. Horses and guns just suck. Mm -hmm. um, Hannah, are you a certified firearm instructor? Uh, I don't know. Okay. Have you ever taken, like, any courses or anything to become an instructor? No. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure if that's required for this. Yeah. yeah, and it might not be, but more just, you know, your background and yeah, your totally. interest in yeah. this kind of stuff. Well, yeah, no, mostly just trained with my dad. My dad, like, probably wouldn't send me to go train with someone else exactly, you know. Makes sense. Yeah, he yeah. is kind of the industry. Um, so as far as the accidental discharges on set, when did they occur? Okay, so I think one was October 17th, okay. 
those that actually it, they both occurred within 10 minutes of each other. So they were on the same day. They were on the same day, and it was chaotic okay. for that little bit. Um, but anyway, so I go to the bathroom. It's the first time I've been able to step off of set. Um, I think it's like four, four or two, maybe three o'clock. Um, finally get to step off set. I'm on the toilet, and all of a sudden I hear some screaming in my earpiece. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And then I hear Dave say, it's okay, everyone. It's just a misfire. And I, I like, go, what the fuck? So I run out of the bathroom with my pants halfway down. Um, I'm running to set, trying to figure out what happened. And I walk up to set, and Sarah's, like, loading the guns. And I'm like, hey, like, how's it going? And she's all like, oh, good. Um, I was like, what happened? She's like, nothing, really. Can you load the one in there? And I say, okay, I'll go in there and I'll load that one because I had been loading that Henry with that with that stuntman for quite some time now, okay. probably like most of the day. Um, so I go in there and I load it with him. I load that one with him and I tell him, all right. So I say, I said, all right, you got about 13 quarter or half loads in there. I can't really remember what it was for that particular scene. That might have been, the actors were outside, so those were probably quarters. So I tell him you have about 13 quarter loads in there. And he said, is there one in the chamber? And I said, yes. And he said, okay. And I said, okay. So don't touch the trigger. And he was like, okay. And I walk out. And then I go up to Sarah and I said, hey, uh, what happened? And she was like, I was like, I heard there was like a misfire, which is like the wrong terminology for it even. That's an accidental discharge. Um, so I was like, I heard there was like a misfire or something. And she was like, uh, yeah, I was loading it. And she's like, and it just went off. And I said, because I had to train her how to do, how to put them in and make sure that the hammer goes down gently enough. Because I asked her if she knew how to do that from Seth. And she's like, yeah, but let me just do it again a couple of times in front of you. And I saw her do it. And I was like, no, no. I was like, put your thumb all the way over the trigger. I mean, not the trigger, the hammer. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, if you don't put it all the way over, your hands will be sweaty sometimes and it'll flip. And so she was loading it, and I'm not exactly sure what happened. Like I said, I was in the bathroom, but guns don't just go off like that. Um, and if you're loading it, it's most likely that you made a mistake just loading it and that the hammer came down too quick. Okay. And, you know, when you're in a rush, that can happen. It hasn't happened to me, but I can understand it happening. Um, and then as soon as that had happened and I walked outside and I was asking her about that, Next thing I know, boom, inside of the fucking thing. And I already told him this gun was hot. I know for a fact I did, and we were doing that scene all day. So this man knows this gun is hot. And then I go in there, and I said, what the fuck are you doing in here? And he tells me, he's like, I don't know. It just went off. And I was like, well, it's a lever-action rifle, and that's not really how that works, bud. You know? So pissed him off a little bit, but I said, all right, be careful in here. Thankfully, we were doing that scene pretty much all day, so I think a lot of camera had their earplugs in, but... It was inside when it went off, though? It was inside of this, yeah, little shack that they were in, and most of the camera crew was in there at the time. Okay. Yeah, so that one was inside, and then there was also a popper misfire with special effects. Okay. Yeah, and that was, uh, that was the day... That was the day that we first started shooting and everything we didn't we had pretty good luck with that every time you know we got done with the scene I count all the shots so I know if there's still a hot gun on set so I was looking for that and most of the time I would just run to the actor and be like don't touch it it's hot still okay yeah um as far as when Sarah's gun went off is that possible if you like drop the hammer too quickly that it can discharge yeah totally and it was pulling the trigger uh, yeah, no, that happens, that happens. Okay. If you, well, see, that's the thing. No, so you have to pull the trigger in order to bring that hammer all the way down, you know? So you have your finger on the hammer, and in order to get the hammer to release back to a position where the person could grab it and do the scene, you have to put your, you have to touch the trigger and slowly lower the hammer down. If you touch the trigger, it'll just send the hammer down. So if your finger isn't there to stop it while you're loading it, it's going to come down and shoot it. So these, I mean, now I understand why that can 
I mean, that I mean everybody has said so, that it happens often, of this kind of stuff. So I that that, that was, totally can happen often, and it's just because ultimately you do have to lower down that hammer again in order to start the scene. You can't, like, give it to the actor, like, talk back and everything, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, and it's it's the same with a lot of, um, like, even my 22, I have to do that as well. You know, like, I'll bring it back. There's, like, a little piece that stays back. And unless I hold that and slowly release it while holding my trigger, that would go off, too. Interesting. And so even my Walter P. About even well. My, well, and that's just my Walter P22. That's not a revolver. Like, that's just a regular, like, magazine. In order to load these, does the hammer have to be back? It has to be half cocked. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So yeah, and then you have to bring it back all the way, or like kind of you can you can bring it back from a half cock, kind of, but it helps to bring it back all the way and just bring it down slowly. Okay. Um, after both of those uh, accidental discharges, what happened? So. This day is kind of when Sarah and I butt heads, um, because ultimately, like, after hers, I was livid, and then after that one, I was, like, furious, um, and so I tell her, I was like, no, dude, I was like, what just happened, and, like, I'm getting heckled by the fucking stuntman at this point, um, I said, no, dude, that, like, wasn't okay, we need to talk to production about this because a lot of people are probably pissed about that mm -hmm. because it happened within 10 minutes of each other, two of them. And I was like, oh, my God. I literally screamed out, what the fuck is happening? Um, but so I told Sarah, I was like, hey, we, need, we should probably talk to production about that. And, like, Sarah is embarrassed at this point. She's shaking. Her face is, like, pretty mad. Mm -hmm. um, and she's not really responding to me too much. She's, I said... I said, well, like, you know, you did that while loading it. And I was like, so I'm not sure if people are going to want you loading the guns anymore. And she was like, well, yours just went off in there after you loaded it. And I said, yeah, well, I can't be responsible for every dickhead fucking stunt guy that gets a hold of the gun and doesn't understand the concept that it's hot. Right. You know? And she was like, all right, well, so we'll go ahead. So she, I was like, we need to talk for, to pre-reduction. I'll let you talk to them. I'm not trying to get us in trouble here. I'm just saying, like, we need to mind this because a lot of people are probably pissed. And the next thing I know, I get a text from Seth. Um, so she was there. She was, like, mad, angry texting. And I thought she was probably talking to the producers. And the next thing I know, I get a text from Seth. And Seth tells me, uh, Sarah told me about her accidental, mis like her accidental discharge. It was an accident. Accidents happen. You need to get over it. And I said get over it. I was like, what are you talking about? I said, I'm not making a big deal about this. I was like, I'm not going to production to rat on her. I don't know what the fuck you're going on about. So there was nobody from production in the area? That I think there was people from production in the area. I think there were like two uh, the regular chunk, chubby producer, he was there and I think Nathan might have even been there. And nobody they were there been. a lot. Um, no one said anything. Sarah apologized on the spot, I guess. Um, I didn't really apologize uh, for that because I'm just trying to figure it out at this point, and I don't know what that guy did. Who uh, was um, I don't even know his name. I think his name was Blake. Yeah, he. they also didn't have me train him at all with the gun, and he's Alex's stunt double, mind you. So, you know, Alex. he's Alex's stunt double. So he probably should have at least been trained, but also... Uh, Alan, the stunt coordinator, was like, oh, my guys know what the fuck they're doing, so don't worry about them. So, yeah, um, didn't get to work with that guy. And me, back to, like, the Seth thing, um, I went up to Sarah about it, and I was like, hey, I texted her, and I was like, I'm sorry if you thought I was trying to start problems about this. I was just trying to say that we should tell production because... I don't want, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we both got fired for that. I wouldn't, like, you know, we need to make sure that everyone still feels comfortable after that. And she said, um, right, she said, no, I understand. Um, I contacted Gabby and Ro about it, and I told went ahead and told Seth, and I apologized to everyone on the spot, and I think they're going to just move past this and move by it. And I was like, okay, cool, as long as you contacted the producers. Okay. 
But Other than that, didn't ever see her actually contact them. No, no, I didn't. Uh, and also, uh, at that point, I had already pissed her off, and she went to Seth about it. So I wasn't going to fuck with that anymore, and I just let her handle it. Okay. Because and you ultimately, didn't she, yourself. No, because she was my boss and already was a, yeah. Okay. Um, to your knowledge, do you know of any reports being made about those? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, I uh, have been wondering recently if she did talk to them, and no one from production talked to us about it, which I thought was pretty weird. You know, like, no one even said, like, all right, guys, like, you know, pick your, get your shit together. Like, no one said anything to us, at least to me directly. Was, um, so when Sarah's went off, what happened? Did you take the gun after that, or what happened with it after? Uh, after that, you know, we just had to keep loading it for the stunt guys, and ultimately, uh, after hers went off, I didn't exactly have the option. We had three people that needed to be loaded right then. Okay. So I didn't exactly have the option to take Sarah off of guns that day, and also, she is my boss, so I'm she not allowed to take to her off of guns. Yeah, she does continue to load. Okay. Even after that? Yeah. After her discharging? Um, who unloaded them that day? Unloaded them from the blanks? Yeah. Both of us. Okay. Yeah, and we unload them as we get them in from the actor as soon as they're done doing the scene. You and Sarah, though? Yeah. Pretty much any big gun battle in this entire thing, we were both loading and unloading the guns. What about the, so the special effects that squib or whatever that went off? It was like a popper. Um, I'm not sure if they had a squib go off. I never saw that. Um, it's like a popper. It's like a thing that hangs from the ceiling, and it's filled with, like, little debris and things like that. But they were all supposed to go off for a scene, and one didn't go off. And then, like, maybe two minutes after the scene, it just, like, randomly went off. And people were like, oh, shit. But we were outside, so it wasn't too bad, you know? Were you present? In, so you weren't present when it went off? The popper? Yeah. I was present. Okay. I was outside, and I was a little, uh, like, maybe 20 feet away from it. Okay. I wasn't directly on the porch, so a lot of people on the porch were obviously freaked out, but I was pretty far away. Okay. Do you know if any reports were made for that one? Uh, For that popper? Oh, I have no idea. I know, especially if it's not my department. I wouldn't really know about it. I didn't make any reports. Um, and I just want you to confirm, were guns ever taken out after hours on lunch, on days off? These, are, these guns absolutely were locked up every single moment. That means there were not there, to my knowledge. Okay. Um, going and back including lunch every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then going back to that um, accidental discharge of Sarah, I know you said that you weren't there. You were in the bathroom. Yes. Um, I was there for the second one. Okay. With is the it, stunt man. And is it okay for you to walk off when they have... Uh, it's okay. Sometimes, you know, like I said, I was, we were doing a lot of gun battles that whole entire day, and ultimately, there was only two people shooting at the time, and I told Sarah, I was like, I need to use the bathroom right now, or I'm literally going to piss my pants, and I told Dave that I was going to the bathroom, too, so if I tell them I step off, I step off, and they know that. Okay. Because ultimately, you know, you can't hold it sometimes. Right. Yeah. Um, and it really sucked that day, too, because the bathrooms were, like, far as shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, to your knowledge, do you know of any employees doing uh, drugs or drinking on or off set? Um, off set, I know, yeah. People probably participated, and we all went to the bar, like, you know. Drinking or drugs? Yeah. Yeah, for which one? Both? Yeah, drinking and some drugs. People smoke weed for sure. Okay. Did you ever smoke? Yeah, I smoked weed on the weekends. On the weekends? Yeah. Okay. Uh, did you see anybody else? Uh, yeah, I saw 
you know, my the head of my department, they had some weed tea. Um, yeah. Who's the head? Uh, Daniel Ortiz, I think. Uh, I know I smoked some weed with the crafty girl on the weekend one time. Okay. Um, any smoking or drinking going on after working days? After working days? I mean, I'm sure of it. And I definitely, I definitely smoked a little bit before bed. Okay. Um, and I would drink a little before prior bed. To going to work. Never. Did you ever see anybody under the influence on set? No. Uh, anybody drinking on set? No. Okay. All right. We're going to go um, day of the incident, okay? Okay. So the box of ammo that you pulled from that day. Yeah. Um, box of dummies. Right. Where did you pull that box from? Um, so that box, it was kind of peculiar, actually. Um, now that I've thought about it a little more, because we had been looking for the 45 long cult dummies and we hadn't had a lot of them because like I said, we used up all of, a lot of mine at the beginning, if not all of them. And so we had to order some 4440s, which are kind of a similar size. And then we did get some 45 long colts a little before that, um, probably before that weekend. And we put all of, pretty much all of that entire box in Travis Fennell's, uh, gun belt. Okay. Yeah. And then, so this box, I hadn't been aware of any more long cult boxes and everything. And this box was kind of just sitting uh, right next to my safe on like this kind of extra bag that I bring to carry guns in. Okay. Yeah. And so I thought it was kind of weird looking back at it now. It was kind of just like sitting on top of my stuff and considering the prop truck got moved over the weekend. I don't know, like, how easily that would have stayed out there. And this box was there in the morning. Can you elaborate on that when you get there? Because I think it's a significant issue. Right, yeah. So this uh, wasn't one of the original boxes that were provided, though. No, and it was weird. I think it just said dummies on it. Like, okay. nothing else. I saw just the word dummies on it, from what I could remember. Which is not the regular font I'm used to seeing on it, either. And it's propped up in your bag. And, and, yeah. And, and, it's propped up in my bag, uh, you know, just, like, sitting on top of stuff, like, not falling over in the bag, you know, because it was on top of something. So, like, it seems weird that it wouldn't have fallen over while moving. Do you remember which bag it was? Uh, it was, oof. it was, like, um, it was either above a Smith & Wesson bag. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's like it said Smith & Wesson, and I marked it out with Sharpie, so that way people wouldn't rob my car. Um, oh, and then there's another black bag that I had, too. They were both, like, kind of – there were two black bags kind of usually stacked on top of each other. Okay. So that the box that you pulled out of that day, though, was on that bag? Yeah. Okay. And – It was just kind of sitting up there, and I remember I was, like, looking for, you know, blanks to pull, dummies to pull, and I saw that box, and I was, like – I was, like, exclaimed, and I was, like – I was like, where the fuck did this, like, box of dummies come from? I was like, have we had this the entire time? I was like, we've been needing these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Nicole just laughed, and I don't really remember if Sarah was there or not. But I said, like, oh, well, whatever, at least we have them now. Put them on the cart, and they went out with us. Okay. And um, I, as I picked them up, they were jingling. So that indicates that they were dummies. Okay. Had you seen the box prior to that point? I hadn't really noticed that box prior to that point, but I think I had noticed a box that looked similar to it that we had gotten those newer ones from. And I think I remembered like a box similar to that. And it might have it might have been the same box even. Okay. This was maybe because we didn't put those dummies back in there though, but that's the only other box that looked like that box. Okay. Was one of those newer boxes that we got. And I think it just said like just dummies on it. No lettering, anything of the sort? No, no letter, lettering or anything like that. I think I just saw the word dummies. Okay. It didn't say caliber on it? Uh, I don't believe it did. It might have said long quote on the other side. I don't really remember. Okay. LC, maybe. All right. I don't know. So um, at the beginning of the day, before lunch, how many guns were pulled out? Okay. <laughs> Can I have 
like a piece of paper mm-hmm. or something, just because like there's a lot of people in this, you know. Yeah, I have. No. <laughs> Probably a few. There we go. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like you're running out of paper. <laughs> All right, so you know, there's there's Alec Baldwin's character. This is Russ. Um, Jensen character Wood. Uh, drum. And we have a Miller over here. And so these are the ones that were being used today. And also, I think Boone was coming in later that day, but I don't think we pulled his gun. So check this out. Miller has two pistols and a long rifle. Rifle. There we go. Rust has a pistol, a long barrel one, different than everyone else's really. Long barrel. And he also has a Henry rifle. Rifle. So at this point, that's, you know, that's like three guns, four, five. And then Wood has a gun, and he also has a long gun. So that's another pistol and another rifle. Oh, wait, he has a shotgun, my bad. And the drum also has a shotgun and a pistol. Okay. And those were all prior to lunch? These are all prior to lunch, yes. So I think that's a total of one, two, three, five pistols and four long guns, two shotguns. Okay. And if you would like, that's yours. Um, you might you might need that. So. Okay. <laughs> well, we can illustrate a little more, so keep it. Cool. Um, were they loaded prior to lunch? Yeah. So what you have to understand about before lunch is that we were at another location for most, for half of the day before lunch, and then we had gotten done with that location and we moved up to the church. Okay. Right? So during the day, um, at the beginning of the day, none of those were dummied up at all because the shot was so wide. You okay. just, like, wouldn't see it. So there was nothing in these? There was nothing in these until we got to the church. Okay. Which yeah. is, but still prior to breaking to lunch. Yes, yeah, still prior to breaking to lunch. So, so if you had to break up the day like that, you could split, like, before lunch into two things. One where we were somewhere else entirely and nothing was dummied up. And after that, uh, we were in the church and things started to get dummied up, and but weren't dummied up right away. Okay. Um, so then which ones of these were loaded was prior done. to lunch? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wood dummies prior to lunch, wood and drums pistols were dummied up. Sarah helped me dummy those up. Okay. And uh, a little later on, the camera started getting in on Russ. And so Russ got his dummied up uh, maybe an hour and a half before lunch. Okay. Yeah. Anything with Miller? Miller was not in there. Okay. Yeah. So Miller's character was coming later in the day. Um, Yeah. So he wasn't in the church at all. So honestly, I'm pretty sure that we put away his two pistols and his long rifle for a good proportion before lunch because we always try to put them away as we're not using them and lock them up. Okay. So only ones dummied up though are the pistols. Yeah, three pistols. And they should have both been used at the time of the incident. Like they were both, all three of those were out there. Okay. So who loaded what gun? Uh, Sarah and I loaded woods and drums. I don't really remember who they are, identical guns, so you wouldn't really know. Um, okay. And then Rust, uh, I, I dummied that one up. Okay. Yeah. And all the dummy rounds? All the dummy rounds, yeah. And we were shaking them and checking them as we did it, yeah. Okay. And then some of them didn't have to be shaked, but yeah. And why didn't they have to be? They didn't have primer caps on them. And sometimes I accidentally still, like, shake the ones with holes in them, just thinking that they're going to shake, and then I, like, realize. Yeah, that's the only time where I've ever, like, thought there was a bad one is, like, when I shake it and I don't hear anything, and then I realize, I'm like, oh, it's the ones that don't shake. Can you recall when you loaded, whichever ones you loaded, um, what specific rounds you put in them? Yes. Okay. So... For the rust pistol, um, the wooden drum, I don't exactly remember those, you know. Uh, I think most of those, not exactly sure what was up with those. Um, But for the rust one, I remember I had four of them without primer caps. 
okay. because I always try to use those ones ultimately. Uh, I have four of them without primer caps, and then I grabbed some dummies from that box, and I, like, brought them in there, and I was walking in with the... I'm walking in with his belt right here, and I'm walking in holding the four uh, the four no primer cap ones and some extra ones too. And I'm there were two that like could have been shaken, so I'm shaking them both as I walk in. And I walk in and I put the four no prime the four no primers in there. And then I like look at my hand and I notice there's one with a hole in the side, so I use that one next. And then I try to put one of the ones that shook in there, but it won't go in. And so at that point, I showed Dave, um, I leave that one out because I noticed like that needs to be clean. So I leave it out. I move, I move the cylinder to a location where you wouldn't notice that that one isn't in there. Yeah. So I move it to where you wouldn't be able to see that. And then I go ahead, I show Dave, uh, he watched me do it too that time. This is before lunch. And uh, I walk out after handing it and showing it to Alec, too. Okay. So before breaking for lunch, there was only five rounds of marker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I proceeded from that one that wouldn't go in. I just set it on the cart after that. Okay. The four that you got without the primer, Yeah. where were those pulled from? Uh, those were pulled from my pocket. From your pocket? Yeah. Okay. So the other two were pulled from that box. Yeah. Do you remember about what time you loaded these guns? Um, not exactly. I would maybe guess mm, like ten thirty for rust, maybe ten. And then for the other two, they were loaded like maybe 30 minutes before that. Okay. Yeah. So fairly early. Yeah. Pretty early in the day. Starts super early. When you broke for lunch, um, none of the rounds were taken out of any of the guns? Uh, no. None of those were taken out. We just put them in the socks and we brought them to the truck. And from there, we put them into the safe. Okay. Yeah. And then the safe. Loaded with them. With the dummies, yeah. Yeah. Still yeah, dummies. I mean, yeah. yeah. Just so we're clear, yeah, just with the dummies. Okay. And the other two guns were full. Yeah, the other two guns still were dummied up, yeah. Okay. Um, so who physically put these back in the safe? Uh, you know, I think I'm pretty sure Sarah was doing it at the time, and I was kind of just down on the ground, like, handing them up to the prop truck because I had a really bad headache. Okay. Yeah, so I didn't climb, try to climb up there or anything because my head was, like, pounding. And did you guys um, take them to the truck with the cart, or did you just carry them? We just carried them. We left the cart there at lunch. And was all the ammo in that cart? Still? Yeah. And was there some in the truck still? Yeah, there's there's always going to still be, like, blanks in the truck because we want to never need to bring all of them out, okay. you know. How many boxes do you think are left on that cart? Uh, on the cart, I would guess, like, maybe hmm, I had some shotguns. I had some, I would guess maybe 10, 10 boxes. All on the bottom? or On the bottom. On the bottom, and then there was, you know, the dummies on the top that we were taking from. Okay, so just one box on the top. I think just one box on the top. Um, I might have been preparing some things beforehand and dumped uh, some quarter loads into my fanny pack or whatever and left a box up there that was empty. Okay. All right, so after lunch, who took the guns out of the safe? Uh, after lunch, uh, not really sure. Don't really remember that too much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it would have been one of the, you or Sarah, right? Yeah, me or Sarah. Okay. Yeah, like I said, I kind of had a headache, and I was, like, getting over it, so. And they were all still in the socks? They were all still in the socks, yes. How do you know which ones to pull? If they're all... We leave the handles out. Of the guns? Yeah. Okay. And then also, I set them... 
So normally, like, there's a bulk of them up on the very top. I'll kind of set them on, like, the sides where the rifles, like, heads go if I need to access them quickly. And then there's a few solid gun safes. There's also, like, holsters on the side. So we would usually put Jensen and Swin, wooden drums, guns over there because they're the two sheriffs and they go together. Okay. And then we would just put Russ gun, like, kind of below all the other guns, too. Okay. Yeah. Um, so when you pulled them back out, did you guys check the rounds in them? Uh, we didn't. We brought them to set as okay. as they were in the socks still. Okay. Were they ever reopened? The guns? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, I reopened the I reopened the rust gun. I'm not sure about the wooden drum. Okay. Uh, Sarah was mostly working on propping those guys up. Uh, the rust gun I opened up after lunch because I remembered that it was dirty and I remembered that I was like, all right, we're about to start shooting out of it. So I go and I put the little cleaning guy that I have. I open it up, put the cleaning guy through, take one out of the box, shake it. Um, and at this point, after I had put the cleaning guy through, Dave's in my ear and he's like, hey, we need the gun in here. And I'm like, okay. So I start to bring the gun in there and shake it, put it in. As I'm walking in, and then I bring it to Dave, I show Dave, like, all of the cylinder, and then I tell him it's dummied up, um, and I say, all right, um, oh, yeah, and he's like, it's okay, uh, it's just, he's, like, getting talked to at this point, by the way, too, by Helena and Joel, and he's sitting there, and he's like, can you just hand me the gun, because I'm going to sit in with it, and I said, Okay, and I showed him it, and then I walked out after showing it to him and handing it to him. So he was just supposed to be sitting in with it. Okay. So you clean it, but then grab another round from that box. Yeah. You didn't pull one because you said that you had put it on the cart. Yeah, I didn't pull that same one. Okay. Um, Any issues when you put that round in that time? No. Okay. And I think it's because it was clean. So would you say it's your responsibility to check? The guns after they come back out? They come back out? Like when they were brought back out for lunch? Uh, yeah. We um, It's my responsibility to check them into the actor as they go out to the actor. So not to check the rounds again? Um, I wouldn't really check it unless it was going to set. But it did go to set? Yeah, it, it went to set and I checked it with Dave. Okay. Um, did you do any other... You know, I know that you have different processes for checking these guns. Did you do any other check on that gun? Um, I did I did um some barrel obstruction check too, also because you know, while that while that round wasn't in there, you're able to pull the hammer back slightly, look down the barrel and see if there's anything in the barrel for that. So I did a barrel check on that gun. And did you see anything at that point? No. Okay. Um, that round that you pulled out of the box, that last time that you loaded, yeah, what did that look like? Uh, it looked like the dummies that don't have the hole in the side or anything. Okay. Um, did you notice anything different about any of the rounds that went in? No. Because you said that you spun it with Dave, right? Yeah, I spun it with Dave. Okay. And you didn't notice anything different? Um, no, I didn't notice anything different. And four out of those. I was also getting talked at with Dave and everything, and I'm just mostly trying to show it to Dave. Right. Yeah. I mean, while also looking at it. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, but the four of them still have the depressed primers. Yeah. Okay. And then the two didn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you think someone would potentially put live ammo in? Um, I mean, the same way you would put the dummies or the blanks in there, opening it up and putting it in there. Okay. Um, and you're talking about the dummy boxes? What? Yeah. The, the box from that morning. What do you mean? So I'm saying, like, you would, if you wanted to load this with a live, potentially you would just pull it back half cock and put it in there. I don't know if but you understood the question. I, I don't think I am. Yeah, Sorry. so, but you said that you loaded each and every one of those rounds. Yeah. Um, how would you say that a live round got in this box that you pulled from? Um, 
I'm not entirely sure if someone put li a live round into that box or not. Uh, I checked those to the best of my abilities. I was walking in, shaking it in my ear, mm -hmm. and I thought I heard it shake for sure. When do you think somebody would have had the opportunity to put a live round? Um, you know, it's hard to speculate on that exactly, but, you know, that gun, it was on Alex most of the day, uh, and then also it was on top of our cart sometimes, too, and there were times when I was gone to the bathroom, you know, and like I said, I got to pee, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell the girls to watch the card and everything, but sometimes the girls get distracted by the actors. Hey, you need to elaborate on the box because you're missing that part of the question. Okay. Of how that could have gotten in that box. Um, so, I mean, honestly, that box was sitting out all day. And when I picked up that box, I heard it jingle, like the whole box jingle. So that, to me, was saying, like, you know, this is a box of dummies, you know, still check everyone for the jingle. But so definitely some of those were 100% dummies, you know, and I don't know, someone probably could, possibly could have done something at lunch. The box could have already had some live one in it in the morning, and you probably wouldn't have noticed um, unless you picked it up. Um, yeah, I'm not exactly sure when that could have got in there, and honestly, it could have been in there from the beginning of it. Okay. Where was the prop cart? The prop cart, so that's another thing. The prop cart, like, moved um, significantly after the incident. Um, well, I mean, I'm not, everything got moved after the incident. So yeah. Okay. That's not really. All right. Cool. You know, I'm a concern, but during lunch. So during lunch, it was still in the same spot where I told you guys, uh, you know, front of the church, the doorway here, your guys' quad car over here that I was sitting in, my little cart over here next to a black tent. I think this is the SAL. Well, that was actually the that. Kind of Yeah. So about over here. And there also was a black truck there earlier that day. Okay. So, so I'm right by that black tent. tent. Mm -hmm. Okay. A little behind it because I don't want people, you know, touching it. Okay. Um, so Kurt's there prior to you guys leaving for lunch and is in the same spot afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Um, where was the prop truck? Or is it that truck that's there? Uh, the prop truck, whew. the prop truck is, doo, doo, doo. the prop truck's like all the way over here. So down at like the end of the town. Yeah, the down at the end of the town, like way over there. Right when we, as soon as you get in those gates, uh, next to the gallows, it's across from the gallows. I'm like, there's a couple more. Okay, cool. Which might help, might not help, but. Yeah. I was like, Without all the, the Google Maps. <laughs> uh, I was like, what the hell? Anyway. Um, so way down at the end. Yeah, it would be, that's why, yeah, that's why we kind of keep a lot of stuff on us because they don't like to move the prop truck, especially closer to the stuff. So it was pretty far away. Uh, you remember where you took me to the bathroom? Yeah. Past that. So that's a, like, very... Yeah, it was town. right like when you would maybe get pull up and like the vans are there to take people. Yeah. That's where the prop truck usually stays. So you guys have to pull guns from way down there and then ring them all the way. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's like a pretty good distance. It's yeah. a pretty good distance. And then that's why we also don't want to bring the cart all the way back to the prop truck. So it got left by that tent. Yeah. Um. Nothing looked different about it after. Nope. And we have done this a couple of times, on, especially on, like, big shooting days and everything, just because we are out there, like, in the boonies with, like, sticks, snakes, all that crazy stuff, and big rocks. So, yeah, a few times we just left it there during lunch. Who all uses that cart? Uh, just me, Sarah, Nicole, props. That's it, though. 
Okay. Yeah, that's that's it for the cart. Yeah. Usually people will try to set their stuff on there, and I quickly shoo them away. Okay. Um, some some people this. still like to put their stuff on it to rile me, um, but yeah. So more in a joking manner? Or I don't know. Yeah. They just, like, they know I don't like them to do it, and they still do it anyways, and, you know. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it's common to leave it out. Yeah. When you bring breaks for lunch. Mm-hmm. I mean, what about um, at night? At night, we bring the card in at night. On um, where does it go? It goes in the truck. Okay. Yeah. Um. So this day, there's obviously ammo on it mm-hmm. when it was left out. Yeah. Okay. All right. After lunch, how many guns came back to set? Uh, okay. Um. I'm pretty sure because we were getting into the nitty grits of it. You know, we were about to start shooting indoors, and ultimately, uh, we weren't going to be seeing the horses outside, so I didn't bring the two shotgun. I brought one of the shotguns of wooden drums, and so here's the thing about that day. I was bickering with uh, the stunt coordinator all day because he wanted to shoot two pistols before every shot just to make smoke and everything uh, in front of the camera. And I was like, no, that's just like extremely uncommon. And he's like, well, we did it on dead for a dollar. I was like, no, that we're not doing that. And, but I brought a shotgun, uh, in case like, you know, we could just do one big one if the director really wanted it, but we weren't planning on really doing it. It was just more of Joel like pushed for it. So we only brought, uh, the rust pistol, the drum pistol and the wood pistol and then also a shotgun. Okay. And you guys pulled all four of those out at the same time? Yeah. Um, did anybody have to go back for anything? Uh, I know that I I think I brought him there, and then I immediately went to the bathroom after before we started getting into stuff. Okay. So I brought them to the set, and then I immediately had to go pee. Uh, did you already give Dave the gun? No. At so, this point, no one had asked for the guns yet, and they were just supposed to be on the cart. Okay. Did anybody stay with Kurt? I told Sarah and Nicole, too. Okay. Yeah. And were they still there when? Uh, Sarah was flirting with Jensen, and I don't really remember if Nicole was nearby, but Sarah was pretty close to the cart still. Yeah. All right. So three pistols, one shotgun, nobody went back to the truck for anything. Um. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't think I went back to the truck, and I don't think Nick Sarah sent Nicole back to the truck. Like I said, I went to the bathroom, and I didn't really. But no it. other guns were pulled out? No. Besides those four? They shouldn't have been pulled out, no. Okay. Um, what time did you come back from lunch? Uh, the, 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 the. I'm not entirely sure. Usually our lunch goes from 1230 to like 130-ish. Okay. Um, what time frame do you think there was between when you guys came back from lunch to you pulling the guns back out? Um, coming back from lunch, you know, we get in the vans from base camp. So we probably take five minutes getting from the base camp to the set. And then from that point, uh, we hop right off of the, off of the thing and we, grab the guns and everything, and we go straight over. Okay. Especially because, like, you know, you don't want to be late. All right. So who, I mean, did you grab the cart, take it back to the prop truck, or did you just carry the guns? We just carried, from when we came back from lunch, Mm -hmm. we just carried the guns to the cart. Okay. Yeah, because we brought them there from the cart, brought them back from the truck, to the cart after lunch. Okay. And then who carried what guns? Um, I'm not exactly sure. They were still in the socks, you know. Um, you'd know if you carry a shotgun compared to a pistol, right? Yeah, totally. Um, maybe Nicole was holding a shotgun and I had a pistol and Sarah had two. Okay. Or maybe Sarah, someone's holding, like, we all kind of just had to hold, like, gun belts, props, you know, not to mention like badges and things like that. So you're just carrying them. we're just all trying to carry all the shit that we have to bring every time. Okay. Um. So 
how long would you say, so you guys went straight from the prop truck, took him to the cart? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then, obviously, you have to take all these socks and everything off these guns. Who took them off? Uh, so, like I said, I went to the bathroom at this point. Um, I'm not really sure if Sarah had started doing anything else from that point. All I remember is that I remembered the rust gun was dirty, and so I grabbed the rust gun, took it out of the sock, and proceeded to do the whole cleaning thing I told you about. Okay. Um, all Which right. I thought it was pretty weird that, like, they immediately needed the gun in there, like, that quickly after lunch. Usually things take a little while for camera to get set up and everything, you know? Okay. Um, you clean the gun, put that last round in it, and then how long would you say that took? Um, like, five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Where does the gun go after that? Excuse me. <laughs> um... So the gun after that walks in with me and it goes to Dave. Try to show it to Dave. Dave's getting talked at. Um, inside or outside of the church? Inside. He's okay. sitting in the pew, and I think he's supposed to be Rust or someone. And from what I understood, it was just supposed to be a shot where, like, he's sitting there with the gun ready. And then also Dave was just sitting in with it, and then I was going to come back in whenever Alec got there. But Alec got there and no one called me in. Okay. So, so I wasn't was... able to do that last check before Alec got it because I had no idea that the gun had been handed off. And also the video village, due to the camera qu crew quitting that day, wasn't working. So I had no way to see in there. Okay. So you opened the gun for Dave mm -hmm. to do the check mm -hmm. inside or outside of the church. Inside. Okay. It was it was open already because, you know, I put it in there, and I walked in putting it in, and I just left it open. And what did that check consist of? The check consists of me spinning the cylinder for Dave and telling him um, that it was gummied up. All right. Did that gun go to anyone else? Was that, you know, did it go, because obviously it was in the sock. Did anybody else have a handle on that gun? After lunch? Mm -hmm. no, uh, not that I could tell. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, was, did Nicole ever handle the gun? Mm. Russ's gun? She only handled it uh, the day before, just like brought it down to me from the cart. Okay. But yeah. not the day of the incident? No. All right. Um, so you give it to Dave, and then where do you go at that point? Uh, I give it to Dave, and I step outside because we're about to start shooting, and I was getting, like, all my stuff ready. Um, and also, he was... What do you mean by getting your stuff ready? Uh, getting my fanny pack filled up and, you know, getting my pockets, like, lined with different types of blanks and everything because I have a pocket system where all the halves go on one side, all the quarters go over here, this is my dummy pocket, and... Yeah, and these are my empty pockets, and sometimes I use my butt pockets if I need to. So, like, uh, Sarah, usually I would just set the per my fanny pack up for her, even though I like to have both on me because Sarah doesn't understand the importance of pockets. But So I would, would set that up for her, and I would start getting my pockets and everything ready. So it's pretty common for you to put stuff in, like, your pants pocket, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Common to put mostly blanks in there, yeah. And then also some trash, you know. Like, you can't exactly just throw trash around and you eat stuff. So, it's just um, a lot of pockets. So that's why I like those pants. You can, yeah. So, you hand the gun to Dave. And then, did you see what he did with it at that point? At that point, uh, he was just sitting in with it and not moving it at all. Just holding it. Just holding it. Okay. And his finger wasn't in the trigger guard or anything. Um, obviously, this gun goes in Alex's bandolier, does cross draw with it. Yeah. Um, Which I was already worried about that because he hadn't really trained with that much. Okay. Yeah. I texted his assistant the night before and wanted to make sure that he was comfortable with that. But they said that he was fine and that, yeah, they were going to figure it out and stuff. So, do you have that text message still? Yeah. You do have that. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. 
Um, so he was just sitting with it. Obviously, it's not in a holster. No. Um, did you see when he handed it to Alec? No, I was outside. Okay. Yeah, um, it didn't seem like that much time had gone by. I think I was outside for maybe like 10 more minutes, 10 minutes after I had handed it off to Dave. That the incident happened? Um, yeah. Or? Before, yeah, and then the incident happened like 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so you take it into the church and give it to Dave. Did, was there ever, did you ever make an announcement about it being a cold gun or anything of the sort? What did you explain to Dave? Uh, I told Dave, I said, the gun is dummied up Okay. from lunch. All right. Um, let's go back to this little guy right here. Where were you standing when it happened? Yep. I was at my cart. You were at the cart when it happened? Yeah. I think our cart, I think we had moved it up ever so slightly okay. from that point. So a little closer um, or maybe maybe it was back there and that truck had just moved, actually. I'm not really entirely sure. But, yeah, I was right there, and I was getting my stuff ready. Was this scene eventually supposed to contain, and I'm, I'm going to say live fire, and no, it's not, but, like, blank fire? This scene, what we had been doing all morning was supposed to lead up to the scene that we were, we were supposed to be doing blank fire in, but this particular shot was not. Okay. But eventually it would have gotten to that point pretty much. Yeah. All right. After the incident, um, I know that you had explained that you ran inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the incident occurred, and I, like, kind of didn't really flinch at it even. And Sarah said, what was that? And I said, I don't know. And Sarah said, was that the gun? And I said, there's no way that could be the gun. And then, uh, next thing you know, I hear, like, on the, in the earpiece, like, set medic emergency, and I'm like, oh, what the hell? And I thought it was, like, a popper that had blown someone's arm off or something. Um, but I go over to the front of the church, and I look in, and I see people on the ground, and I'm like, oh, my God. And I said, was that the gun? And they said, yeah, it was the gun. And to which I go inside, scream, uh, and then they yell at me, and then I walk back out. I ask for the gun. Dave brings me the gun. When you were in there, did you see where the gun was? No. Okay. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. No. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, everyone's kind of staring and looking at me at this point. Uh, and walking in and seeing that was super fucking awful, too. So I kind of come out here. Uh, I'm, like, over here at this point, you know, kind of away from everything. They've brought me the gun. I take all of them out. The first one I take out has been discharged. Um, and it, like I told you, at first I thought it could be one of those old dummies, um, but it could have been a live round by all means. And once you showed me that, uh, what they pulled out a jewel later, yeah, it kind of seemed more like that. Um but, yeah, so I pull all of them out, and the other five were still dummies, just fine. Okay. Um, so Dave brings it out, hands it to you. Is it open or closed at this point? Uh, it's closed. Okay. Um, hands it to you. Where do you inspect it? Uh, you know, it was, like, still really open situation to me so I was either right there or I was right there when you opened it when I when I checked the gun I'm pretty sure I got it here and like we had kind of walked away with it you know okay. yeah so you said that you emptied the gun right yeah where did you empty it I took it out put it in my hands and then I handed them to Sarah and I said go check that fucking box I got it from that box and what to Sarah the, the dummies and everything and shell. So everything that you had in my hands went to Sarah. Um, just handed, handed it to her? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, just handed it to her. And uh, I took the gun and I kept it in my waistband after that. Okay. You didn't go check the box? 
no, I didn't go check the box. I was freaking out. And Brian, my boss, came over at that point. And Brian took me a little further away to, you know, kind of relieve people looking at me. And you told Sarah, I didn't want you to leave that up, but you told Sarah to check the box. What happened? I said, check the box. Um, and <clears throat> she comes over to me a little later, you know, while I'm off to the side. And I said, did you check the box? Um, and she said, and we also had collected the other guns, and Sarah took those as well. Uh, and then I was like, did you check the box? And she said, yeah, there were some bad ones in there. And I don't know really what that means. That's just what she said. And I thought that meant like one or two. Okay. Um, two, two days later, Sarah came to my hotel room after Helena Hutchins's one of her vigils. And uh, she came up to my room and was checking on how I was doing. And I asked her, I was all like, I was like, I can't believe somehow there were some bad ones in that box. And she said, she said, Hannah, more than half of that box was bad ones. And she didn't explain what she meant by bad ones? She said more than half of that box, she said more than half of that box were bad. Which, I mean, it's safe to assume that live. Okay. At that point, yeah, it was safe to assume that those were live. So mixed in with dummies. When you emptied out the gun, how many rounds were there? There was six. Okay. Yeah, one had been discharged. And do we remember what that one looked like? <sighs> no, not really. Um, I took it out at this point, like, still pretty shocked. I'm, like, shaking just thinking about everything. Um, but so... Um, I take it out and pull all the others out. I'm, like, showing them to Dave, and I'm saying, like, no, like, the others are dummies. Like, what the fuck? How is that in there? And I just, like, look at Sarah, and I, like, after I said that, I was like, I don't know how that happened. They are all dummies except for one. And then I, like, look at Sarah, and I was like, go check that box right now. And I handed it to her, and so it was pretty quick, and I wasn't even, like, really looking at it. I was just more, like, looking at Dave and just freaking out at that point. How did you know that one wasn't a dummy? Um, I'm not sure it, that it wasn't a dummy still. I mean, now we know really that it could have been a live round, but in my head, I was thinking that might have been one of the old dummies that the primer cap can pop it out. Okay. Um, because those, I don't know, those still, I haven't heard a lot of reports of those, but I know that those did used to exist. Okay. So after a gun was emptied, I mean, how, how do you yeah. mind if we take a break? Yeah, I'm like can, yeah. getting sure. a little flustered. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
German Shepherd like a young one a few years ago and like she totally like chewed up all my panties and fucking trashed all my plants. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, I don't I don't want oh, him inside like at all. He, yeah. He used crate trains in the beginning because I just wasn't gonna deal with that. Yeah. I normally don't crate train my dogs, but I've only had huskies and uh, so this was the first different one that I had and he's like he's like the most intelligent thing ever, but yeah. he is like reckless. Like yeah, he's insane. <laughs> like, oh, man. But I got him because I wanted to breed. Oh, well, yeah. Those huskies are pretty. Oh, yeah. Those are huskies. I love calling German Shepherds. I like calling them Herman Shepherds. I think it's fun. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> right. Yeah. Seventh inning stretch. I know, right? Yeah, yeah I literally stretched yeah. in here. <laughs> You'll see it. You'll see. It. <laughs> yeah, I totally had you and Alex mixed up in my head. That's so funny. I am Alex. I know, I know, that's what I'm saying. I had these <laughs> guys, like, I thought she was Alec, and I talked to her, like, most of the time. Then I didn't even realize. No, nope. that's Samantha. Yep, that's Samantha. Do you want another water? Okay. Um, all right. So going back to those loose rounds that were in your pocket, it's common for you to carry them in your pocket. Yeah. Um, my dad will gone. usually, my dad usually carries a couple of, like, his favorite dummies, you know, like, good night safe ones in his pocket, and I do the same. But okay. we had, um, three guns dummied up that day, so I used a couple of them on other guns. Okay. Is that why you keep them in your pocket? Is that why you keep Yeah, them because just in case, and then also I have another, in the bag, uh, on the bottom of it, you'll probably realize that there's also some dummies in those pockets down there, too. I try to keep, like, at least a good 12 dummies ready in situations. Those are, but you're talking about the, like, bags, though, right? I'm talking so, about your pants. Yeah, pants. I'm talking about my pants. Yeah, okay, yeah, I always try to keep, like, at least five or six in there. Do you remember where you pulled those from? Uh, those I came out of one of my old boxes, and we had been using them from the weekend previous, and those were the ones with no primer caps. So did you have those in your pocket prior to going to lunch? No, those were, those should have been in, in the gun already. No, I'm talking about ones that were in your pocket, so. Yeah, the the four, the four without primer caps. Um, I think we pulled, I think you pulled six rounds, six or seven out of your pocket. No, I pulled, I'm pretty sure I pulled the four out of there, and then I got the other two from the box and shook them as I walked. No, I'm talking, so the, the night that you came in for an interview. Oh yeah, I had some. I had some extras in there. I think I found some more, and I was like, I'll put some more in there just in case. But do you remember when you put those in your pocket? No, not exactly. Before or after lunch? Uh, I don't really remember. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. So then, how come you didn't pull from your pocket to load that gun? Mm, well, I, I like I told you, I pulled those out earlier, and I totally forgot that there were more in there. More in where? More dummies in my pocket. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just had forgotten that they were there. That one last one that you pulled to load the gun? Do you remember checking that round? Yeah. 
and what do you remember about it? Um, it seemed fine to me, and uh, Dave was just kind of in my ear, and so I was shaking it, walking in, and putting it in there. Okay. But he wasn't in your ear until you were in the church, right? No, he was in my ear, like, and oh, the, the your radio. <laughs> yeah, there's Got always it. there's always a fucking people in my ear. It's not right. the voices. <laughs> it's not the voices. It's a ton of people, and you'll see me a lot of the times on set. Just take that thing out and throw it as far as I can. Okay. Yeah. So, you don't so when that's how I knew when the when he was telling me. Yeah, I don't remember exactly when those were in my pockets. And honestly, they might have been in my pockets, um, in a in a spot where they aren't normally. You know. Okay. Um, all right. So I have some questions regarding, like, media statements that you guys have put out. Okay, yeah. Um, and just so you know, like, one of them with Bob got a little crazy, and Bob said some pretty weird stuff that doesn't necessarily represent um, what I had told him. He's not um, on the case anymore. Yeah, we took him off, just so you know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We completely... Yeah, Gorn's is no longer in the case. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's more just stuff that you guys have released. Um, so the first one was about um, training days. You made a statement about how you wanted training days. Yeah. Um, who did you express that to? Gabrielle. Okay. And, and I asked him about it to Roe and Gabrielle. Right from the get-go, I tried to start getting actors and everything to start working with me, kind of one a day would have been ideal. Um, they told me, they were like, well, no one really needs to get trained. You know, these are all trained people. And I was like, okay, whatever. I thought that more actors were coming in later and I would train them as the show went on. But then Joel called me and Joel was like, no, we need to train like all the actors. They're going to be there that first week. And I said, okay. So yeah, they set up a training day, but I was trying to get them in from like the very get go. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, the statement was that you fought for training days. I did. So, um, yeah. I I was always pretty much arguing with Gabrielle and um, uh, for him. Because at first I didn't even want to have the training day, you know. Um, so. They're expecting people to just. Yeah, no. Them. They literally did not want to have that training day at first, and they told me it wasn't necessary. And then after Joel called me, Joel told them, like, no, don't be stupid. You guys need to have these people trained. Joel, like, that happens all the time with directors and producers. Uh -huh. um, so Joel pretty much Joel ruled them saying no. Yeah, Joel was like, no, like, you know, they, were, they didn't want to pay the money for it. Joel was like, do you pay the money for it? Um, but yeah, so they didn't want to have that day originally. And then the, the training day that I fought for that I was trying to fight for was the one with Alec, uh, after our training day. So after I had trained with Alec, Alec was the only actor I trained that day. And I was thankfully able to step away from props for a little bit in order to train Alec that day at the church. And we practiced some of his stuff. Um, other than that, he was really distracted he was on the phone a lot and he wasn't his holster wasn't available for him to practice with that day so I told him the next day we should practice with the holster and he said yeah I agree I will see you tomorrow I'm also riding horses tomorrow so we'll do that too and I said okay cool and I told Gabrielle and Gabrielle was all like um Gabrielle was basically like I'll handle Alex because, you know, Alex is a producer, kind of does whatever he wants, and so the other producers have to reel him in all the time. So for him to ask for another armor a day, which is only like $60 more, um, for him to ask for another armor a day, they were trying to, like, ex it. Not do it. Yeah. Did you ever put um, any of this in writing or emails or text messages? Yeah, there's a lot of, it's a lot of text between me and Gabrielle. But other than that, mostly the next morning uh, when he was supposed to show up for his lesson, he comes to set, doesn't really say anything about his lessons. The producers are telling me, like, you know, no, like, we don't want him doing this lesson this day. I had already talked to them about it, and I said he needs to practice. And I was telling Nathan, and Nathan was like, you called it. Um, I said, he needs to practice with his holster, otherwise he might, like, honestly shoot himself in the arm or get really pissed off and have a whole ass hissy fit. And it happened, actually, a little after that. Nathan was like, you called it. And I said, yeah, I did. What happened? Um, he tried to pull from his holster. 
it got caught on his uh, microphone, and he got so pissed and threw a big-ass hissy fit and started bitching at sound. Thankfully, I didn't get that. Um, I didn't get the lashing, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, so the next... Yeah, we can show you those. Um, the next morning... But, yeah, the next morning, Sarah had to leave set. Sarah had to leave set all day. Sarah was sick as a dog as well. And Sarah was leaving set to go get shit done, including um, some other stuff like with the knives and the knife holster and all this stuff. So it's just me running stuff on set with Nicole on a very prop-heavy day. And props include food and everything, just so you know. So we had a whole table scene that we had to do with just two people which is manageable, but also, like, I was also training the actor with that gun while they're doing it, you know, like, just the girl. She wasn't shooting it or anything, but they decided randomly that they wanted to have her have a gun. So I didn't get paid for armor that day either. I'm working two jobs, and I was supposed to give lessons to Alex that day, but ultimately could not because, one, he didn't show up, two, the producers wouldn't let him, and then, three... I had to stay on set and work with the freaking food. Okay. But he had agreed to do that day with you, and then it was kind of shut down by others. He said, I will see you tomorrow. And then I also, got, I think it was a little after that, a couple days after that, where I texted his assistant, and I said, hey, you know, does does he need any more work with this? Like, how is he feeling about that? And he's like, he hasn't expressed anything to me, but I'll let him know that you asked. Okay. Yeah, so I had tried to possibly work with Alec more after that. Okay. So those are, like, the training days I kind of fought for. After his assistant, like, didn't really talk to me back, you know, I'm not exactly going to push for this really big actor to receive that training. Okay. Um, so in reviewing, like, first interview and then media statements, and now there's a little bit of inconsistency about when – the gun was checked. Okay. The rounds that were checked. Okay. Um, you know, from my understanding, you checked them in the morning and then didn't take them out again after lunch. Didn't take the rounds, the rounds. out of the gun after lunch? Well, you could like see they weren't checked again. You could see that there were no primer caps. Um, I checked the one that I had put in there after that. Okay, but you oh. said only four of them had no primer caps, and the other two did. Yeah, and the other two did. Yeah, I pulled that other one out slightly and looked for the hole. I mean, the, the hole were at the bottom, though. You'd have to pull it out a pretty good way. I'm pretty sure it was, like, kind of midway. So, I guess I need clarification because, you know, Gorin's is actually the one that went on the media and said, you did not check the gun. Bob. And he was completely wrong. About and that's why we fired him. <laughs> that's exactly why I fired him. And he also said the gun was left unattended for two hours on the prop cart. He, like, made a bunch of crazy-ass statements in that, and that's why I said, fuck that, Bob's off. Okay. So that's why I want clarification on Yeah, no, Bob, so like, checked. Bob said that I didn't check the gun, and that was fucked up. Because, yeah, I checked it when I put them in there, and then, yeah. Prior to lunch. Yeah. Prior to lunch, and then, yeah. Afterwards, opened it up, checked it, yeah. But by check, you mean just opening it? Just pulled it that one out, yeah, and also brushed it and put that other one in. Okay. Um, and I don't know if this is coming from you or if it was from him, um, this whole theory on somebody sabotaging the set. Yeah. Um. Jason kind of agrees with me on that. Uh, I Well, you know, we've all kind of thought about what happened here, and a whole box with what Sarah said to be half live ammunition and half dummy ammunition, that doesn't happen. Like, you know, that's super weird that that would even be on set. So who do you think would do that? Honestly, I'm not sure. Um, I will say right now that, you know, Seth supplies all the boxes. And then on top of that, I was beefing with Seth at the time. Um, I don't really know. I don't want to speculate, but he's also been acting pretty weird towards me personally. And then... So that was that. 
come out for the incident, right? Yeah, well, no, we had a whole last argument, and we weren't talking during this incident. Like, we were in a full fight. Okay. Yeah. But you had said you haven't seen Seth since before. Yeah, we were texting, and I blew up on him over text messages. Right, but I'm saying you stated you have not physically seen him. I have not seen Seth, but like I said, Seth sends Sarah to set with things. Okay. And she was there first that morning. Sarah? Yeah. Okay. That's when that box came up for the first time. Yeah. Also, you know, it could have been there but over you the weekend. But that you'd seen it because it was sitting on top of... That morning, right? Yeah, I saw it that morning. Okay. On top of all my stuff. When you when she got there, it's interesting, it's 640-ish, and Sarah's already been there. That's the first time that box. Um, that I saw it, at least. And like I said, I thought it was weird that it wasn't hunched over on any side considering the whole prop truck got moved. Okay. And describe this box again to me, what it looked like. It was the same white box. I think it just said dummies on it. I'm pretty sure it just said dummies uh, okay. on the sticker. And it was a sticker and a label, not like handwritten or anything. Um, but it wasn't the same font that I'm used to. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, everybody has said, you know, no one ever suspected live rounds to be on the set. Yeah. That's a given. Live rounds aren't allowed. Um, Absolutely not. And especially when it hadn't been brought to set or anything like that to either. Right. So the thing is, there are other live rounds that were found in other various places. Really? Not in that box. Really? Where were they found? Um... I'll go through the pictures because I can't. There's, like, so many different areas, and we'll, I'm going to go over that with you guys, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's news to me. Wow. So, they were all in that box. Okay. Mm. Okay. Oh. Do you have any speculation on that? No. Okay. Um... Do you think anybody else manipulated that gun, Alex gun? Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, yeah, I'm not exactly sure, and I don't really care to speculate on it either. Well, I mean, there's really not a lot of time between you pulling it out. Well, there was time, you know, in the morning before that even. Um, well, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. I but in between the time that you had it, you checked the round. Yeah. And then... There was like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone else did. I wasn't in there. Okay. And that's okay if you don't. Yeah. Um, let's... All right. I had to keep myself straight on where we pulled these. Well, let me clear this off. Okay. This is what comes with All right. Are you okay if we do prints and DNA real quick so I can send my yeah. tech home? Because, of course, I'm yeah, here all day. Yeah. Okay. No, oh. she's got a female. Yeah, no, we could have done that. We could have done that first. Yeah. I mean, you never, never know. But let me grab her real quick. We'll do that. We'll mark it out. We'll take that one Okay. 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 Uh, no. That's where no. you're originally from? Yeah, yeah. My hometown has just, like, been overrun with press and everything. And they posted pictures of my house. 
that's not really even safe to stay there at this point. Yeah, they've been doing the same here, so... I mean, yeah, it's fucking... That's terrible. That's totally docking. Yeah, they're posted here for, like, a whole week, and then at the, at the scene, and... Yeah. I really wish they didn't, like, post pictures of my house. It's a small town, and anyone mm-hmm. could realistically find my house pretty easily yeah. just by pictures of it. Yeah, I mean... And then they made fun of my barbecue and a bunch of other things and just called me poor, basically, which, yeah... Like, thanks for making fun of me. Well, not well making people, fun. I mean, people, when they want to give an opinion online, they're never going to say anything nice, you know? Yeah, yeah. right? They're just yeah. like, look at her. She's poor. Ha, ha. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm a cop and I'm poor. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. The press was just making fun of how poor I am. I was like, thank you. <laughs> it's hard to make money. <laughs> okay. Where is this? Let me just get... So this is our consent form. Were most of these found in the truck? Um, some on the truck. Um, oh, I'll go over. Oh, there's, there's so many, like, my own. Okay. I'm going to let you look through. through. Make sure you're good with it. So this is a consent form to get swabs and then prints. Okay. Cool. Um. Standard. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, yeah and I, I explained it. It's yeah, either. cool. Let's, uh, let's get that going. So you're going to um, print your name up here. Yeah. That way you can wash it back because they're going to make some mess. Oh, fun. Not too much. I love this. Paper, 4, 28, 97. And then if you'll do your full name, though. Yeah, D-U-T-I-E-R-R. It's so long. And then initial these for me. Initial, okay. Strange, because my name ends with easy, but it's not easy to spell. Okay. And then you are going to sign date, and right now it is 751. Oh, 
was freezing when you came in here? And now I'm like, I know. Right. That's yeah, it's a little warm. Especially nice in here compared to the cubicles. Oh, yeah. I was freezing a second ago. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Right. Like, you know, you have some plants in here or something. <laughs> <laughs> I make a lot of. Now, with your right hand again, sorry. Oh, <laughs> what? I was going to say, it's, it's, it's a mess. How many of them? I don't know. <laughs> so, we're just going to do index finger on this side, okay. and then I'm going to do your palm. So, if you want to oh, pull okay. your sleeve up a little bit. Does it matter? My hands are sweaty. No, you, you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, I got hyperhidrosis. Okay. Oh, I fight a lot. Right. So just, yeah. hold your, just hold your palm flat. Right hands are like okay. non-stop. Yeah. 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 All right. And just hold it. It's right right here. Yeah. 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 Yeah
um, to ammo, ammo, guns. Did you ever see anything like this, or was anything like this ever put out? Mm -hmm. you can, you I know. definitely didn't see anything like this at all. So they didn't put any protocols out for? I don't believe so. Um, if they did, it might have gotten lost in the email. Um, not really sure. I'm going to check through those and see. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so safety bulletins, firearms, well, I don't know. Okay. okay. Kind of something that's... Yeah. Um, no. That's fairly um, standard on most productions. Yeah, I didn't see those on my last one either, to be honest with you, or my last one. Um, I think it's also an indie thing, maybe, you know? Uh -huh. Even though this was, uh, what's going to call it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. This was the box. This is the box that was on top of the cart. I don't remember that being the box that was on top of the cart. This is the one that was, or handed, that you guys had said that you had pulled from. I thought it just said dummies on it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't remember this one being the one. I thought it was much cleaner than that. Cleaner a little bit. Uh, like, you know, just how this is kind of messed up right here. Like, these are all kind of dirty, and, like, the side right here is dirty. I thought it was pretty clean and new, the one that we were using. Okay. Yeah, because this matches the photo that you showed me. Yeah, I understand that. Okay. Um, what you guys found, found this on the cart? or? Yeah, this is the one that was given to us that you guys had said that this was the box that you had pulled from. And this is the one that... Sarah checked. This is the one that Sarah checked. Okay, and she found multiple live ones in there. Just one? Suspected. Until it goes to the lab, we can't, obviously we can't confirm. Okay. Um, yeah, she, she definitely said that there were multiple in there. Yeah, this is it. Okay. Um, I don't know. I kind of think it's strange that these ones are missing out of here when I'm pretty sure, like, we had only really touched these first couple of rows there. And then you, I mean. What? This? There's also a hole there. Yeah, no, I think I think that's weird. I don't remember that. Okay. Um, I don't know if maybe one was taken back to the truck or something. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know if Sarah went back to the truck at all with anything. Okay. But you didn't? No, I didn't. I was there with Brian the whole time. Um, Sarah, uh, I don't know exactly. I think she might have went back to the truck. So these two were on the top of the cart. Okay. Also suspected library. Okay. Okay. That was the one that came out of the gut. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if you noticed commonality between these that we expect them to be live. Um the silver? Okay. All right. That didn't stick stick out to you when you loaded that gun? No. But the rest of them were not the same color? No. no. Uh, where did, what are we looking at here? Is, oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. I thought that was messed up right there. I thought that was a different kind of loading gate. Okay, yeah. We'll just went and pulled out after lunch. Um, I can't really tell... If, uh, is that it? I would have to see the bottom of it to really tell if this is rust gun or not. 
Um, other than that, the only other two, if this isn't Russ, they, they should have the two stars on them. Okay, the Marshall one? Yeah, the two Marshall ones okay. that have been out there after lunch. Okay. So I'm yeah. not, is that the Russ gun? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can't, I can't really tell unless I see the bottom of it. You said it had like markings on the bottom. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is your guys' prop truck, correct? Yeah. Okay. Back of it. Cool. Okay. Um, so there's two access points to this truck. Yeah. One is here on the side, it's on the passenger side, mm -hmm. and then this back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is how we found it. Yeah. Um, is that pretty common on how, obviously this is after the incident, so stuff is put away, but is this pretty common on how you guys stored that cart? Yeah, we left it usually right there. Okay. And that's safe? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're telling me, and, you know, I've, um, yeah. I don't really know safe too, too much, but you tell me when you've, Lock it. You pull this handle, it locks percent. itself. You yeah. don't have to like hit the pound key or no, you know what 100%, I mean. Hundred percent. You just lock it and it locks. That's okay. What I said too. Okay. Just do the hand. Yeah. Yeah. It Every locks. single time it locks like that. So. Okay. Um, and this is where you kept the gun. Mhm. Mm so this is the cart. This is how we found the cart the day of the incident. Okay. So, um, I'm not really seeing the box on the top of it. So those, that's the thing, is that box was given to us. Um, to us. By who? Sarah, I believe, but... Okay. And going back to that, are you, if Sarah gave them a box, are you convinced that's the box that you saw? I don't, I don't remember that being the box. That you were pulling from. I don't. I don't recall that being the box that we were pulling from. Okay. Seems a little dingy, but yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. But here's my thing: is that you know. Yeah, there is a sex of live rounds in this box. Which this matches what you showed me. Yeah. What you brought. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well. Yeah, those are the ones I brought. I'm not sure if Seth has any like that. Okay. But also, I mean, a box is a box. Um, you can put different trays in different boxes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, let's So these two, I think one of these was the one used. I think this one was a potential suspect of mine. Okay. Um, you know, just, I would say that's, I think, a blank that we had pulled there. Okay. But this is, I mean, how the top of this looked. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Were these already on it, or were these on actors? Uh, these were on actors. That one was uh, Slim, and this one was Jensen. So did they just drop them on the card after the incident? Um, they else? gave them back to Sarah. Okay, and she put them there. Yeah. The salt was on that card. Also suspected life. Okay. Um, these were the ones on the side. Two out of the three of these are suspected life. Um, mm -hmm. and this is on the top of the cart. So it's not like from a different area. These are on the top of the cart. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Both yeah. Of them. This is Alex Belt. Yeah. Okay. Also a suspected life. Okay. One of these two. One of them rattles, one of them doesn't. Okay. Now, I think you explained this to me earlier. I'm, I was yeah. curious on what these coursey rounds were. Yeah. Um, 
What's up? What are the horsey rounds? Oh, the horsey rounds. Okay, yeah, I thought you were saying that there were live in those. Um, No, this box is empty. Yeah, but just so those are the those are like the eighth loads like I was telling you about. Okay, one box. That like, I contributed, so you yeah. Shoot around the horses or something? Yeah. yeah. The okay. horsey rounds. Yeah. It's got a little horseshoe. I thought it was cute. This is another box. Okay. Um, okay. With one suspected life. Okay. Copy that. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure about this box. The writing on it. I've definitely seen it before, but yeah, I'm not sure what that writing is. Cause that can be Seth. Okay. Um, he said that he marks stuff like that. Okay. Um, I definitely have found seen some other things from Seth that weren't marked like that. But yeah, like, he he said he does yeah, different kind of ways. Things, yeah. So, do you really strong spend on it when your bags? Okay. Okay. Um, just different calibers. The only the thing that sticks out is that this. Yeah, you always want to keep these on set. These are basically you put those there in order to like if you have a gun scene, you know, and the person is reloading it, they would be if they shot the gun off and everything, they would be dropping those out of the cylinder. And so I have a couple of bags. Okay, so that's why you keep yeah, you the bring, ones that don't have. Yeah, you bring those so that way, you know, you can litter the ground with shells to make it look like people have been shooting there. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, you definitely always need to have, like, at least a couple of bags of ones that have no thing on them, yeah. What do you know about the manufacturer of what you guys receive? Um... I'm not entirely sure. Are you saying like Joe Swanson? Because I I don't know exactly where all these come from. Like I said, a lot of these came from Seth. Um, Do you know? Okay, so well, brands. You yeah. know what a Winchester is. Everybody knows Winchester makes. Yeah. Live rum. Yeah. Okay, so one of these was a Winchester round. A Winchester like live round? Well, it was one of these. I think this like one a was a Winchester. Like it's a 4440? It's not live, obviously. Okay. But at one point, it was. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not saying for this set particularly, but Winchester doesn't make any of those These, the manufacturer they use is Starling Brass. Okay. Okay. And this is just from doing research mm -hmm. and what I have found out. Okay. Okay. So you can tell because it has a like a little star, yeah, oh, sure. an arc, and then a star. Yeah. yeah. So all these have different manufacturers. That's how you can tell where these come from. Okay. Some of them have nothing. Yeah. And some of them, like I said, they all kind of vary a little bit. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, it's like a star, arc, and a star. Yeah. Can I have someone that was this charged? Yeah. So here's my thing with this company is this company doesn't produce live ammo. So what the fuck? That's insane. Wow. So how did that ha that must have is that one of those primer cap things I was talking about? Those older ones that like the primer cap still alive? They I don't, don't know how it. that happened then. So this company and you said the Stalin cap? Starline. Starline. Starline Brass is Starline the Brass. Okay. Yeah. And they don't produce live rounds. So somebody's got to... So somebody... This is used for movie sets. Yeah. yeah. Because they are... Totally. But this was from the top of the cart, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This was around that. That's fine. That should have been the one that I took out and gave to Sarah. That should be it. Right. So, like, what are you... Like, what are you saying for that? Like, somehow that one that sh should have never somebody, been able to fire was able to fire? It have been to a live round or just, I mean. Are you serious? That's speculation. Oh, because, my God. Because those, if they don't make live rounds, somebody had to convert it. Or it was a dummy that just went haywire, I guess. Which, more likely, somebody converted that to a live round. Take a deep breath. That, that's just. 
like I said, I want to be honest with you guys about, yeah, you know, right. Right. about where we're at and what we've found. Okay. okay. Yeah, those are mine. Okay. Yeah. The ones that you keep for. Okay. Got it. And this is what I'm saying. So there's a bunch of random, you know. Some use that fly out of places and that are left places. Well, what's weird to me is all the different brands. Right. So, yeah, they're all, like, kind of a little different, like I told you. It's so, so weird. This is, like, a BHA. This is a S and B. The rest of these are Starline. Starline. Yeah. So. I actually have, have noticed the Starline ones. Um, yeah, I try to use those because I. Where those came from? The Starline. I have no idea. I mean, like, I've seen them a lot before. That's I had some nice. on my last set. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it's the normal of what is supplied. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I don't know if you want to go through those again. Did, no. did they do gun residue out of, did they find powder residue in well, that it, Starline one? It takes a while for okay, me to yeah. come Do you guys have an idea of how long, like, the labs are going to take? It actually took a while. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's my mind. Actually, actually, like months or actually like they were using the quickest year? way to do it. At the state level, will take two years. But the Are you FBI fucking does, kidding no, me? The FBI doesn't do that. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, that's why I brought the FBI. In oh, there. my God. Two years? No, but not for the FBI. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I can't fucking do this for yeah. two years, yeah. guys. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's why I didn't need a light bar. No, totally. Thank God. Um, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Um, yeah, honestly, depending on how many suspected lives are in here, considering with what Sarah told me, I would kind of consider that there's another box. This is it for... Well, just because she told me that more than half of the box she shook and was live. Yeah, you so, process. So, like, like, like so where did that we? Where did those go? I don't. I mean, when you're doing things in a state of, of, you know, uh, after a traumatic situation, totally. Um, what you perceive could not be what is. Okay, so we have the spent casing from Alex Gunn. Okay. Um, we have the one that was in that box. Yeah. Which we were told that you were pull that this was the box that you were pulling from. Yeah, I might. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have the two on the top of the cart. Yeah. The so one those that might have been from the box. Do you think she was? Doing them and then throwing them out. No. On the cart. Um, so she's checking. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I'm, I wasn't there. Um, one in the bandolier on the top of the cart. Right. And one in Alex bandolier. Mm hmm And then the one that's unsure that was in that blue shrubby box. And they looks like they're all Starline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're all that that type. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. So my thing is, I mean these boxes obviously I mean you can just even though these are dummy rounds. Yeah. You know, a majority of them Obviously, you yeah. can see that they are different kinds of dummy rounds. Totally. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why would there be mixed boxes of this stuff? Um, so usually, like, you know, the only thing that I try to keep consistent is if there's no primer caps or if there's primer caps. And so most of the time, just try to keep the primer caps, the ones without primer caps together. So that way I know where they are. Okay. And then, you know, this box of, why would there be live ammo on the set? I have no idea. Um, at this point, it's kind of seeming like somehow these were mixed in. Okay. Um, Did you ever do 
gun practice on this set? Never. Not once. Never took the guns out for target practice in this set? No, and I think there would be, like, videos, pictures of that or anything. You know, everyone would be pretty stoked if we were going shooting on set. Okay. Even on the weekends, there would at least be something. You wouldn't suspect anyone to tell me that you were out there? I don't know why people would say that. Okay. Because 100% I was not, and I guarantee you people would probably have pictures and be stoked about it. Okay. Is there any reason that you can think of that your DNA or prints would come back on these? Maybe picking them up, um, maybe moving them around, maybe not necessarily putting them in things, maybe not checking them because I'm not putting them in things. Okay. And, you know, I did open the box as well. So, yeah, I opened it. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I still don't really remember this being the box, but, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I thought it just said dummies written on it. Did you find any box that just said, like, dummies on it? So many boxes. I'm just saying, like, you know, if there was a box. Oh, look. I mean, I'll I'll look further into it. Yeah, I'm just saying, if there was a box that, like, just said dummies straight across on it, you can switch boxes around, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, I don't really know. Yeah. And for... This was all found on the cart or was in the truck? Or? Yeah, these were on the cart. Yeah. On the top of the cart. I mean, this is one on top of the cart. Where did that shotgun go after? Um, shotgun? Yeah. That should have been there. Where? That should have been probably on the bottom of the cart. Okay. After yeah. the incident? Yeah, unless Sarah moved it. What about those two other guns? Those should have been on the cart, um, like I said, given to Sarah. I'm not sure if she put the guns away or something, just out of, like, you know, wanting to keep them locked up. Because, yeah, I definitely didn't put anything away, and I was with Brian the whole time kind of freaking out. Right on the side. And you didn't see where Sarah went. I mean, that's not a way to run with guns. No, I didn't see I didn't see where she went and she was gone for like ten, fifteen minutes before you guys shut up. Yeah. So that's where we're at. Okay. Mm-hmm. Every single one of those suspected lives is Sterling Brass. Okay. Um, that's fucking crazy. That's crazy. That's like literally insane. Do you guys have any questions? No. Lot to, yeah, what to. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, not really. Okay. You um, can always call me. Yeah, yeah. This is. That's pretty crazy. That's like fucking. I don't even know how he would do that. Okay, well, let's uh, get going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. <coughs>